Good morning, and this is uh, my sixth and final speech. And at two o'clock, I'll be heading back to Michigan as I gotta go to work tomorrow morning at four o'clock. I've got Saturday hours, and I've got uh, to teach a class to 32 nature paths all day Sunday. I'm back Monday, and I do house calls to the Amish, and then I go to work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I don't get a day off another week and a half. So. The sixth one, I, I, I've been starting off all of my speeches with the element sound by Tom Lair because that's kind of all I do is talk about minerals. And some of you have seen it. Sing along if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, and rhenium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, germanium, and iron, and americium, ruthenium, uranium, europium, zirconium, rutesium, vanadium, and lanthanum, and osmium, and acetine, and radium, and gold, protectinium, and indium, and gallium, and iodine, and thorium, and thulium, and thallium. There's yttrium, and terbium, actinium, rubidium, and boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, barium, and barium. There's holmium and helium and hafnium and erbium and phosphorus and francium and fluorine and terbium and manganese and arcanium other than the magnesium, dysprosium and scandium and cerium and cesium and lead, praseum, nimium and platinum and plutonium, palladium, promethium, potassium, polonium, and tantalum, magnesium, titanium, sodium, and cadmium and calcium and chromium and curium. There's sulfur, californium, and fermium, berkelium, and also mendelium, einsteinium, nobelium, and argon, cryptonium, and radiantium, and zinc, and rhodium, and chlorine, carbon, cobalt, copper, tungsten, tin, and sodium. These are the only ones of which the news has come to Harvard, and there may be many others, but they haven't been discovered. I like that. Uh, I've been playing that in front of speeches for as long as I've been doing speeches because that's every element that they basically know of. Man's made a few more, but they don't last very long, make a nanosecond or something. Uh, Harry Potter, I think his name is Radcliffe, he actually got on one of those British, com British TV programs and sang that whole song. So if he can do it, I think I'm going to try to do it eventually. <laughs> So the first speech was minerals for the genetic code. I talked about bad minerals. I talked about all the minerals in the brain. I talked about minerals in acupuncture. Now this would be kind of an application of minerals. Um, so I don't have any slides to show because this is like, okay, um, people have complaints in life. And so instead of, you know, putting a slide up, because I made over 150 slides for each speech, and I never got past 30 in any speech I've given. Because I let the crowd kind of dictate which way the thing goes, the question and answer. When it, when it go too far out of balance, we just go back to the slides and start over, we kind of reboot. So today, is this last speech is, okay, people have health problems. What's the number one problem in life right now? Well, fear. Fear of what? One in two people getting cancer and dying from it? That's men, women, 1.2. Type 2 diabetes is as rampant as it comes. Um, everybody's getting diabetic, and it causes what's called metabolic syndrome. You lose your eyes, you lose your kidneys, you lose something that allows you to get Social Security early in life. <laughs> So we would, I, I'll just basically open the floor to questions because that's what we're going to do this hour. So the first question is Joe. And Joe's agreed to stand up here and let me pick him apart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's going to be good. So <laughs> just turn and face that way. So Joe comes up, and when you meet somebody, do you look at their eyes? Well, I looked at his eyes, and his eyes are bloodshot as bloodshot gets. So that tells you instantly his whole body is racked with inflammation. Tell me, sir, do you have any problems? Oh, I'm diabetic. Oh. And he already told me how he got diabetic. How'd you get diabetic? I got it about, about 10 years ago. I, before that, I never had it. I, just, I started doing the pills, the doctor gave me, and I just got worse and worse. And I've been doing, I cut down a lot of, a lot of sugar, a lot of bread. I've been cutting down right now on a lot of different things. But I got pain, I got everything. But the diabetic, you know, I get it from 400, I can have it from 400, an hour later, after working hard, yep. I can get it down to, say, 200 or 150. And they never seen anybody like me. If you go take and pull out your Google and you type in type 2 diabetes and you type in the word magnesium, you'll get 2.9 million hits. Magnesium is a critical mineral and all type 2 diabetic people are deficient. Where did this magnesium go? He already told me. What have you been living on? Sugars? Pops? I used to. Yeah. And now he's completely addicted to energy drinks. Yeah. Well, look at the energy drink bottle. I mean, what's in it? I don't. It's nothing but sugar, caffeine, and then they throw in whatever stuff that the government will have them 
to hop you up and get you going. I met a man that was 24 years old, and I was mortified that he comes in and his vitamins morphine sulfate. I said, do you have stage 4 cancer? No. I said, do you have complete herniated disc? No. I have pain. I said, and your doctor gives you morphine sulfate? You're a father of four, and this is what you take in the morning. What do you put in your body in the morning? Diet cola. Oh. I said, what do you have for lunch? Well, morphine sulfate, diet cola. I said, what do you have in the afternoon? Three monster drinks. I'm like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So you, when people come in and they're sick, they all have a tale of woe. It all sounds the same. It's called inflammation. What's the inflammation coming from? Lack of water, too much of this, too much of that. So when they walk in, they're chewing gum. And that's the last thing you want to do is walk into my office chewing gum. Because, <laughs> well, I'm going to ask for a stick of gum. And when I go, oh, you can't have that, I'm going to throw the trash. And they go, you just threw my gum in the trash. I go, that's OK. Go down to my health food store. I'm going to give you a stick of gum that won't kill you. Because there's no stick of gum sold in any big box store, little box store, that doesn't have what? Aspartame and or sucralose and or Accuflame K. Accuflame K puts cysts on your thyroid. Aspartame causes a big shift in the calcium and magnesium. Some claim it might even put uh, formaldehyde in the brain. And then you have Splenda or, and that's nothing but sugar with chloride, and it wipes out your gut bacteria. And this is the ingredients that's in everything called gum in store. So, I mean, a woman might be sitting there, and I walk by and I do this to the purse. And I'm not trying to see if she's got money. I want to see what kind of candy she's got in there. <laughs> I want to see if she's got gum in there. I want to see if she's got diet halls. I want to know, because diet halls is full of aspartame, and people come in with these terrible problems, and I go, it's your Tums. No, it's not. I've been doing those for years. But the wife goes, no, you switched to diet Tums two years ago. And they, they don't put two and two together. So I have to be a detective. So this gentleman came in and he was living on pop. Which pop was it? You said you drink a lot of pop. What pop? Well, I don't drink, I don't drink pop, but I tell you, I do energy drink. I no, you said you used to drink pop. Well, yeah, years ago. But what did you drink years, years ago? Well, it was Coke and Pepsi. It was all that I was drinking. Okay, I was so dead. Coke, Pepsi, and, Mom, and Dr. Pepper yeah. have enough phosphoric acid in it right, yeah. that it drops 400 milligrams of magnesium per serving. Now, if I went up to this Amish gentleman and it says, well, your soil test says, I'm going to put nothing but maybe four tons of phosphorus on the field. Now, he owns a company called Ed. He slapped his knees, started laughing. I go, look at pal, let me show you where the row is. Because you don't know what you're talking about. There's no way I'm going to put that much phosphorus on my fields. But he has took his immune system and flung it with phosphorus. In the process of neutralizing all this phosphorus, he's run out all of his key minerals and all of his macro and micro minerals. So what's the first ingredient of these colas? Well, it's not water, it's carbon dioxide dissolved into water, correct? Carbonic acid, carbonated beverages. What's the second ingredient? High fructose corn syrup. So fructose and boron go hand in hand. They go to the corn and they strip the boron away from the fructose. They concentrate the fructose. You drink the fructose and what does it do? It leaches the boron out of your body. It takes it out of your brain. You lose your boron, what have you done? You now don't have the ability to retain what magnesium you did not waste from the phosphorus. So magnesium goes down really low, really, really low, and then you can't absorb calcium, you can't retain selenium, and this whole bombarding, cascading effect. You don't have a piece of gum, do you? I don't. I have a blacker. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a cascading event. So does this guy get diabetic overnight? No, he just starts getting worse and he gets more inflammation, more inflammation, more inflammation. He goes to the doctor and he says, I don't do too good. He goes, oh, here, try your Tylenol. Hey, that stuff works pretty good. I have more. Now I can't move. So now I'm backed up two or three days. Oops, now, I, now my compost pile has gone from aerobic to anaerobic. Because everything is in there and it's fermenting. I don't know why I have so much gas. I don't know why I can't go, but I feel better. Well, that just wears off after a while because you've got it so big and it's it stretched out. Now you've got all these aerobic compounds going into your, they call it leaky gut. Look it up on the internet. So he just gets wrapped with inflammation. We'll get your homocysteine level checked. That tells you the state of DNA inflammation. And if your homocysteine is elevated, you've got to do things to bring it back. And that's what B vitamins are for. That's what your mineral profile is for, is you need to reduce inflammation. 
So do you instantly reverse diabetes? No, but what's a mineral you can take that has a profound effect on diabetes? It's called boron. Boron has to be present to make a cascade of minerals get back into you, and it has an effect on your ability to absorb insulin. You have a prostate problem? No prostate problem that you're aware of. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. everything else is good, but just that, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. And I know what time of night calcium regenerates. So if you're low in magnesium, calcium becomes dominant and you cannot sleep. So, uh, what time of the night do you just spontaneously wake up? All of the time, but I tell you, I hate getting out of bed. I go to bed earlier than I ever did probably the last five years, yeah. but I'll tell you what, I don't get a sound sleep, I don't think. That's, That's because you're profoundly low in magnesium. But people that are low in magnesium and may have normal calcium consumption, when calcium is going to regenerate, they wake up at 3 o'clock. That's that simple. I wake up, what are you doing? I don't know. I took a pee, lay around for a little bit, went back to bed, slept right after that, but they don't get past 3 o'clock. That's when you have calcium magnesium imbalance. So if you go, oh no, no, I wake up at 2 o'clock, and I go, uh oh. That means when your liver is in complete regeneration, it's very unhappy, what insulin are you taking? I really don't know. Now, well, when people have the wrong insulin or they have the wrong glucophage and it affects the liver, they wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning. So I get older people, what time do you get up? Oh, I can't sleep past 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, give me your list of meds. And we put it into a computer database that says, well, these two meds are causing you liver problems. One of the two has got to go. Go back to your medical doctor. Well, I didn't get that pill from him. I got that pill from this doctor. And I got that pill from that doctor. And nobody's looking over their shoulders. So if people wake up at 1 o'clock in the morning, I ask them, what's wrong? In here. At 2 o'clock, I want to know what's wrong with the liver. At 3 o'clock, I want to know what's wrong with the calcium magnesium balance. At 4 o'clock, you're vitamin D deficient. Wow. You wake up at 5 o'clock, get out of bed. That's the start of the day. <laughs> <laughs> it is. And, uh, so, what are you recommending for the calcium magnesium imbalance? Take magnesium. Don't take no more calcium. <laughs> if you're eating good organic food, you never worry about calcium. What's the base saturation of calcium to magnesium in your crops? 80-20? 75. 75, 80? 75. Yeah, I like, I always talk 80-20 uh, um, because that's what I have to talk. And it varies, from, it varies from where you're at to what the soil looks like. But the human brain is one to one. You know what it takes to grow a crop, and I know what it takes to make a human brain. The human brain, the calcium magnesium levels are 945 to 145. That's about as one-to-one -one as I'm going to get it. So if your food is calcium laden, calcium is never an issue. In Israel, 20 years ago, a bunch of doctors got together. They were tired of looking at their grandmothers falling and breaking their hips. And they hadn't invented biophosphates and this type of stuff that they poison people with now. And they basically said, okay, let's... Let's take a third of those grammars and put them on magnesium. Let's take a third of those grammars and put them on calcium. And a third of those grammars on phosphorus. Well, phosphorus didn't do anything. They all got worse. Calcium, they didn't do anything. It got worse. And the magnesium group at 500 milligrams a day got 10% better. Oh, you mean just the daily recommended allowance of magnesium caused osteoporosis to re re reduce and, re and regenerate at 10%. They go, oh, well. Maybe we're not getting enough calcium magnesium from the food. And that was the conclusion of the study. And I'm looking at this going, oh, so you can reverse osteoporosis, and it takes magnesium. Well, now they know it takes vitamin D, they know it takes vitamin K, and there's a trace mineral called strontium. Now, you've, maybe you've all heard of stem cells. It's like a baby cell that doesn't know what direction in life to go. And, and the one that makes bone can become skin. But in the presence of strontium, that stem cell swings towards bone. So we use strontium, magnesium, vitamin K, vitamin D, and boron to regenerate the bone structure. Yes? So uh, talk about the forms of magnesium and what you think is most assimilable, or is it individual? Okay, so the question is, so everybody hears it, you know, how many forms are there, and which ones do I like? I like a magnesium that anybody can take that they can get a lot of without having diarrhea. Now, that natural vitality, also known as calm, I understand the, the, the gentleman that owned it and sold it is, is at this conference, and, and I need to shake his hand because that's the number one selling thing in my store, mm -hmm. by far. Because I can put magnesium into people for pennies a day, but only seven out of ten people can take it. So we give them sample packs to make sure 
that they don't become a goose and get loose as a goose? <laughs> yes, question in the back. The citrate form, are you okay with citrate? I'm okay with anything you can get down. Now, magnesium oxide is the biggest one sold in box stores. And, and it only has a 7% assimilatable. And I actually use it in my product, but I'm not making a magnesium replacement product. I've got to move iodine, boron, and selenium 9 inches from the small intestine to the liver, and it works really well for what I'm using it for. I'm doing an iodine replacement, a selenium replacement, and a boron replacement, not a magnesium replacement, because I think that you should take magnesium separately. And all these key minerals, I think, should be taken standalone or very few of them together at one time. Dr. Lori, i got a pill right here. It's got 940 things in it. And I'm going, good. I bet you 940 things are at the bottom of your toilet. I know a guy named Scotty, and he owns Scotty's Potties. And when he dumps Scotty's Potties after conventions, and there's all them pills laying on the fields out there, and some lucky farmer now has all those vitamins and minerals to grind up into the soil. Because they just go through you. Yes, ma'am. I was just going to say the owner of Metro Vitality is actually on the BFA board. Oh, yeah. He actually funded the initial BFA. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So, um, my question is what is a good source of selenium in your positive degree? Okay, so you want me to go through the type of selenium you look for in a multiple vitamin to make sure you're not getting diabetic? I don't want a multiple vitamin, I just want selenium. <laughs> go buy Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts. Brazil nuts. <laughs> that, that is the highest source of selenium that you can readily buy. But not all sources, not all Brazil nuts are equal. Mm -hmm. Of course not. If you buy the ones that are shell, the selenium is starting to evaporate. Mm -hmm. So if you can get the real ones, throw them in your freezer, they're a lot easier to break and pick the meat out of them if they're frozen, and you can keep them in your freezer for long periods of time. The whole. Yeah. But people bring multiple vitamins to me, and they go, what do you think of this multiple vitamin? Well, iodine is the most important, selenium is the second most important. So I base my entire thought process on anybody's pills based on the source of iodine. If it says iodine from kelp and selenium as selenomethionine, I don't care what else is in it. If it says potassium iodide and sodium selenate, throw it away. It's coming from China. 92% of the vitamins taken by America come from China. And they are bombing us one pill at a time. Because they are allowed to put aluminum-laced food colorings in multiple amounts. Woman's one a day has four forms of aluminum-based food colorings in it. And then it has titanium dioxide in parentheses for color. Well, titanium dioxide is white. But yet they have three colors. Now, why do you want a pill to be white and colored at the same time? Very confusing label. So it's very important to understand your sources. So uh, we won't carry anything in our store. That's not organic. Yes. Wanted, going back to the question. I wanted to ask you about the form of iodine that you get at the Heritage Store, you know, at the Casey Institute. I'm forgetting the name of it right now. Well, let me answer your first question, which is what forms of magnesium? Yeah, that's good. Please go Magnesium ahead. oxide is the least absorbable, and, and not everybody can take calm. You get diarrhea, go to a different kind of magnesium. But take it so that you have bowel tolerance. If you can find one you can take a lot more without having diarrhea, take it. Magnesium theorne is the most expensive on the block, and it's the newest on the block, and it's brain specific. Wow. Magnesium, and then the word, it's an amino acid. Theorine, T H E O R I N I N E. T H E O R I N I N E. T H E O R I N I N E. Magnesium theorine. And it's brain specific. And when people come in going, ask them me diarrhea, ask them me diarrhea, ask them me diarrhea, we put them on mag T, they don't go get them the diarrhea from that one. Uh -huh. Yes. I've had a lot of experience with natural calm yep. from natural vitality. And I just wanted to say, as far as you know, becoming loose or whatever, that if you start with a teaspoon, you, it's between a teaspoon and a tablespoon, and you can work yourself up slowly. You can work yourself up, you can. So, so that's a way to go about it if you're concerned about that. The other thing I think is really important about that product is, for example, I work a lot at the computer and sometimes my muscles can kind of seize up a little bit. 
And it relaxes the muscles. Right. I find it incredibly important for me in that regard. Or if you get muscle cramps, yep. that's really a sign you need magnesium. Well, the regeneration time of magnesium is 7 o'clock at night. So you can take it with your dinner, but I tell people to take it before bed because you want it in your gut when calcium is going to regenerate at 3 a.m., especially if you want to sleep past 3 a.m. Now, if you give a 15-year-old a glass of calm at 7 in the morning, he doesn't like to use the, the toilet of the school. And he'll be running there four times in one class and he'll probably get expelled because he smells or something. So you, you got to be careful when you use calm. I have people go down to the store. They, they used to just send you all kinds of samples and I'd say, look, try this. Now they have a box. It's cost $3 and it's got all the flavors in it. And I go, look, take this home, do one a day and tell me what flavor you like. They're getting acclimated to it and I says, if you buy a flavor you're not going to like, I'm going to guarantee you a year from now that is going to be sitting on the shelf. So you might as well get something you like so that you'll take it. Because people are very peopleish. I say, look, you've got diabetes and you got this and this and you start doing this calcium and you clean your magnesium and you clean your diet up and everything is looking good, you work yourself off the insulin. Six months later you'll go back right to what caused them. And they come back in and I say, you need magnesium. They go, yeah, you told me that the last time I still got the bottle. I go, you should be on your fourth bottle. <laughs> it's just human nature for most people to get over whatever's wrong, and now I don't need that. When you do need these minerals every day. My friend David Brownstein says you need 25 milligrams of iodine every day for normal function. It's like, okay, how many meals of fish from the ocean do I need to eat to get 25 milligrams? Well, that'd be every meal every day. How much sea kelp do I got to eat? Quite a bit. But for optimal function, you need that much. The United States government says you only need 50 micrograms of selenium. I see people, and I don't have never seen using selenium methionine, anybody have any bad reactions from selenium. They just don't have it. The bad reaction from sodium selenate in the China vitamins is a 40% increase of type 2 diabetes. Because your body does not know when the next dose of selenium is going to come in. So it puts it in the pancreas and it shuts the pancreas down. How important is selenium? It's on the tail and the head of every male seed. Wow. Have you been uh, tested for all this stuff that you're talking about and know what to take for it? Well, that's a good question. I use hair screening. Hair is a biopsy. You don't have to punch holes in people. You don't have to drill holes. You don't have to anesthetize them. So you take hair in a prescribed equation off the back of your head so you're getting a current readout of the past month or two of what your hair is drawing out of yourself. And then they take it and we send it to Chicago and they burn it and they find out what kind of lights come out of it. And then they can tell you of the 38, they test the 38 of the 42 minerals found in the brain. They're soon probably going to be tested for 42 once, once we once they realize what's going on, without a doubt. So you get your hair tested, and then you consult with somebody that's got some experience with that, and I do that on Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> How do we get in touch with you, though, to do that? At the end of this, I'll have cards up here. You just take a card, you call up, and say, I'd like a hair test sent to me, and when the hair test comes in, then you call it, and we set up a time that we can both get together. When I get really busy, I use Saturday afternoons after morning hours, or all day Wednesday. Can you do that over the phone? I do that over the phone. I do it by Skype. I got a carrier pigeon, but he died on the last trip. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very easy to test. It doesn't. It, 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 quite frankly, Joe does a hair test that is reaping with arsenic. I say, Joe, you better have your wife's hair tested. It's reaping with arsenic. I go, Joe, send your water in because I think your well's poisoned. And I condemn a well a week to arsenic, uranium once a month. Lead every six months, aluminum a couple times a year. People look and they can see through it, and they go, "There's nothing there," and they taste it. And they go, "Oh, it tastes good. Maybe it's not so good for you, though." And I love to go to a restaurant and they say, "It's like a glass of water." I said, "I am dying from when you actually have water." <laughs> <laughs> What's the water filter you put in your son's dorm? Oh, my son went off to college, and I bought had a heart attack, so I went to the, the city of Marquette, Michigan. 
Um, and, and I typed in water quality report, and of course it said the fluoride is there for all college students' teeth. Uh. So I called up the academic advisor and I said, I've got a bunch of special dudes who may not be able to come in. He says, we handle all special needs. What is your son? He's allergic to fluoride in the drinking water. He goes, huh? <laughs> So it cost me $400 to buy and $400 to install a reverse osmosis GE right from Home Depot into his dorm room. And when the word got out, he actually had water. His door was unlocked and people all day and all night came in to get the water for that semester of dorm. And then they sent me a letter going, well, our records show he doesn't have a measles vaccine. He can't go here without a measles vaccine. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, what's wrong? He's done. Wouldn't let him go unless he was vaccinated. They didn't want an outbreak from one child that wasn't vaccinated. Sounds crazy, but that's what happens. So type 2 diabetes is a very bad thing. So my next question is, Joe, did you quit eating sugars now that you're diabetic? Yes, I did. You know what most people say? What's that got to do with it? So we have a sugar issue. There is this guy named Peter DiMano come out with a book, Eat Right for Your Blood Type. What is he trying to do? He's trying to make your microbiome function with the right sugars to grow the right bacteria. So I tell people, look, there's a list of do's and don't eats. You've got to have some guidance. It gives them something to start with. It says, wait, these I cannot eat at all. These I have to eat now. And after I feel better, I can drift into the gray area. And once you've got a handle of your body, then you can eat things that's off the reservation, and you'll know right away if it reacts to you. Because what do diabetic people have to do? They have to keep checking their sugar levels. So Joe says, well, my sugar is this way, and it's this way, and it's this way, and oh, I'm just a real hard case. I've never seen anything like it until they see it every day of the week, and that's what they tell everybody. Never seen anything like it. That means, well, what's happening here? The pancreas makes the insulin, but what stores it? The liver. So a monster drinks his liver, it dumps all the glucon, and then sugar up, sugar down. So he's got to get his liver straightened out, because that's the storage area for insulin. It's made in the pancreas, but it's stored in the liver when people are fluctuating in every direction. And what did he tell me today? He says, you know, since I've been here and had a monster drink, and I'm feeling better now than I thought a long time. Why do people take monster drinks? Because they have to go to work. And if I don't feel well enough to go to work, I can't make money. If I can't make money, I can't pay for my truck, and I can't pay for my house, and I can't buy city water. <laughs> so diabetes is a really bad deal. It, it, it ends up being nothing but a state of inflammation and a state of inflammation, and you lose control of sugar. What disease loves sugar? I'll give you an idea. They do pest scans to find out where the sugar's going. Cancer. 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 It's a bad deal. So my dad has got you know terminal cancer. He goes, oh, my cancer's gone. I said, what do you mean? Well, my pest scan didn't show anything. And then dad didn't drink six beers before the test. I said, if you load it up with sugar, you'll be in that active cancer site. Because that's what they're measuring. They, they put a radioactive dye that attaches to sugar, and then where the fastest metabolism is going out, it's using the sugar, that's where the, that's where the dye ends up. And then they can see the hot spots of cancer metabolism because the rate of sugar is so high. So, so that, yes. So what is your, how would you say it's best to detoxify the liver? Or is it uh, there, there's various, uh, milk thistle, obviously, is, is the first one. There's a company that makes what's called a Himalayan detox. I have no idea what herbs are in it, but it works the best. It's a bright orange bottle. It says Himalayan liver detox. I use the Now brand liver detox. And I try to get people to make common sense about what they're putting into their mouth. I go, look, eat right for your blood type. Tell me what your blood type is, and I'll give you the, the do's and the don'ts. And if you follow that religiously for at least two months, it gets you into a different pattern of what you're doing. And then I look for the culprit. I mean, are you, are you chewing these gums bought at big stores? Are you, where, where is it at? You always can find where that little niche is that they don't have a clue the long-term consumption what it's doing. Lady came in and says, look, you have to stop drinking aspartame. I said, this stuff is going to give you leukemia. It's just a bad deal. And she got off it, and three years later, she got full-blown leukemia. So people came in, well, I quit the pop six months ago, and I said, you still have a hangover. I said, you depleted yourself for a lot of years just because you quit putting in the poison don't mean that you're now absorbing and have rebuilt everything that you got so haywire from these continuous consumption. So people can come in six months later after stopping all these colas with all these deficiency symptoms that were supposed to go away when they quit drinking it, 
It's because they never put the stuff back in or don't have the ability to absorb what they're eating. And heaven forbid buy organic food. I live in a very poor area, and it's a universal. I can't afford organic food. I said, you go to Myers right now, some of the organic food is cheaper than the conventional food. You better start looking at the labels because the disparity between the two is really starting to get more of a level playing field. Well, yeah, how do you really know it's organic? And I said, well, they got, you know, jails and fines for people that get caught doing this. You know, maybe it's organic and it's not. They get caught, they're, like anything else, you can get penalized pretty good and get slapped around if you want to. I said, but to me, it's the best shot I got because I know that if you take a single field that's never been planted, and you got a bag of alfalfa, and you plant that and harvest it, put one dose of glycine, and then plant that other half a bag the next year, the mineral content of that plant is from 15 to 52 percent reduced. There was no mineral on scale in terms of reduction. Did it look the same as it? Yep, it's an empty harvest. Looks and smells like food, but it just doesn't have the mineral content of the energy. Yes, Gina. Anything for sugar cravings while you're detoxing? Okay. The question is, sugar sugar cravings is B vitamins. Chocolate cravings is iodine. Because why can't you give chocolate to your dog? Because it kills them. What's in it that kills them? Bromine. So why do you think that they dug? Fibrocystic breast chocolate cyst. Because the caffeine and the bromine causes a shift of potassium into the tissue. And the tissue is an irritant and it causes scar tissue. So people that have fibrocystic uterus, fibrocystic breast are chronically low in iodine. They may be on Synthroid or something. They, they may have, a, have, a, have a dealt with a thyroid cult and high caffeine. So you got to really back off the caffeine, if not eliminate it, get the iodine brought up, and then the liver will pull that potassium back out and you can reverse these cysts. And these cysts can get the size of golf balls or grapes in the uterus and the ovaries. And in the, de in the breast, all they do is they go, yeah, you got really dense breast. And they send you for all kinds of x-rays. Every time they look at that, they go, oh, this could be really bad. You go home and you lose sleep. And they go, oh, this, this is just a dense breast. So we talked about sources of magnesium, sources of selenium. Iodine and boron. Yeah. Okay, so the two types of boron that are instantly assimilatable by the body is called calcium borogluconate. This has been in the hands of the vets since the 40s for milk fever, and fructoborate. Otherwise, on the market, it's called fruit B. One cost eight dollars. One cost thirty six. <clears throat> the greatest research is in the expensive one, fruit B. Because it, it, it drives into cancerous breast tissue, it drives into the knees, it's a great anti-inflammatory. So when the body encounters the right kind of boron, what does it do? It instantly goes to the brain, and when the brain is satisfied, it goes to the bone, and then it ends up in the kidneys for excretion. It's water soluble, so a lot of it that you put in ends up going right out. And generally speaking, the higher sources of boron are fruits, although a lot of things can't live without it, it's just the highest sources of fruits, and prunes are the highest source. Selenium is Brazil nuts, prunes and raisins is boron, and if you really want to go overboard, the highest source of boron I've ever seen is the research done on dandelion root. Mm. It goes from 5 to 6 milligrams to 900. And that's right out in New York. Right out in New York. <laughs> So if you're a farmer and you need to get this bioavailable, what do you plant in your fields on the, on the year you don't plant things? Red clover. Red clover is the great boron turnover. And that's a, a foraging option, too. It's a foraging option. Mm -hmm. but that gets that boron out of the soil in the form that the animals can eat, and then your plants can, it's a far more bioavailable. How important is boron to the farm field? Boron deficiency is the number one reason for corn crop failure in the world. Wow. Yes. Boron. Boron. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I'm a raw vegan, and everybody knows, always always telling me about B12 deficiencies. Mm -hmm. it happens to a lot of vegans. Okay, so what do you, what do you recommend is a great source for B12? Cobalt. Where do I get that? 
Yeah. Animal meat, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I probably have it with my paint if I eat it, but I don't think I want to eat it. Um, I should know the answer to that question, but I just don't know it off the top of my head right no, now. Somebody else can answer it. Yeah. Yeah. So, the, I mean, these Rivers yeast. Rivers yeast. Yeast is just like bacteria food. I mean, that's all it is. It's right. vegan and animal people to eat animal products and B12 deficiency exactly the same. It's the reason why, you know, you get it from, you get some B12 melanin in cows and, and chickens is because they're, they're covered in feces. So, you know, in terms of um, getting like a really good B12, it seems like on um, your own crowd. Um, and, yeah, I probably don't have a deficiency then. I just always hear people screaming, oh, you're raw vegan, you're going to, you know, just die. Well, a lot of times people don't know that they're vegan, that they are B12 deficient until they break a bone. Right. Because in order to keep your bones healthy, B12 has to pull manganese mm -hmm. into the system. Mm -hmm. A basketball player from the 70s, late 60s, Abdul Kabar, mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a vegan, all of a sudden he bends over and breaks a bone and finds out that he's been so chronically B deficient that his body didn't pull manganese in and he had osteoporosis as a direct result of not being able to hydrolyze his food from stomach acids. Stomach acids require B12 to be made, but you also have to have B12 to make stomach acid. This is this what came first. That's called that intrinsic factor. So when people come in and they, you know, just they're terribly deficient in stuff, you know they're not making stomach acids, I just put them on stomach acid pills and I put them on B12 and try to get that whole system fired back up again. Some people have to go on hydrochloric acid the rest of their life. But what are you using for B12? What is your... A sublingual B12. It's an animal free from biotics mm -hmm. research. So you do the sublingual so it goes through the mucous membranes of your mouth, into your bloodstream, into your lymphatics, and it, it, it's a very good way. I think it's a lot better way than just shooting stuff into your arms or legs or something because you know you got a tongue that's got eighteen thousand receptors on it. Well, you're going to recept something when you stick it in your mouth. <laughs> so the leaky gut would be this too, right? The stomach acid pills and the B twelve. Yeah, well, when people ferment their food instead of digest their food, uh, you get. I mean, you look at these intestines, and instead of being like a little round thing going around, they're this big around. And it's because the intestines are so backed up with fecal material that is, that is fermenting and filling full of gas. And it stretches right out. All they got is a bellyache. You look at it in an x-ray, like, oh, macro, you're going to blow up. Well, then you've taken that balloon and you've just got it so stretched out that all the, the tight junctions are really stretched out. And then materials can leak across that. And it gets into your lymphatic system. And either you deal with it effectively or you don't. So that's a really big deal. Okay, so... So much for diabetes. Sorry, could you say one more time what it was for sugar cravings? So oh, sugar is B, B vitamins. B vitamins. Yeah. Right. Okay. And that calcium was calcium gloro. Calcium boroglucanate. Or uh, calcium boroglucanate. There's a, there's like boron citrates, there's boron glucanates, but in the in the readings that I've done, the only two that I'm going to use is calcium boroglucanate, which is what I use in my product, and fruct fructo B. And I take five of those pills a day. <coughs> fructo B, five a day? Yeah, the fruit B, I take five a day. Because it'll naturally raise testosterone, it'll naturally lower estrogen in both species, it gives you better hand eye coordination, it makes your short term memory better, makes your long term better memory better. Okay. And your prostate markers for boron deficiencies is the, is the PSA goes up. When your PSA goes up, you better start eating a lot of boron to drive those numbers back down. Because you keep elevating that PSA, then you're going to have somebody put a finger where the sun doesn't shine and say, you know, we're going to do a biopsy. The lady behind you there. Um, this is kind of shut in but I'm just curious if you have any thoughts on it. So my mom, like when she eats gluten, she can't breathe. It's like really terrifying to watch. But so... For a long time, like these like incidents would happen where yep. she'd be like laboring. Yep. She went to the doctor. They did like all these like scopes and everything, and they're like, "Oh, we can't find anything. Like you're totally normal." Okay. And so for every reaction, there's an equal opposite reaction. And I look at everything in terms of the flow of magnetic energy. And I, the last speech I showed how everything has an equal opposite reaction. The opposite of the lungs is the large intestine. So you back up the lymphatic drainage from the large intestine and there's nothing in the lungs to keep the fluids moving. They back up and you just, people come in cough and mucus like you wouldn't believe. 
So I need to get the intestines cleaned out, so I put them on a green drain. I have them take a head of romaine lettuce and a peck of parsley and put it in water, grind it, let it sit for a little bit, and then strain it and drink one of those a day. And about between day four and day six, everything breaks loose. All the mucus is going out the front door, not the back door. And when all the mucus gets out of the system, breathing becomes very good again. And the bowels are obviously going to move when you put this kind of chlorophyll into the system. But people, oh, I, I go every day. Great. Eat some corn tonight and tell me how long it takes to come out the other end. What do you mean? Poop and look at it. Amazing how many people don't look at their poop and say, what was that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't digest corn. Tastes good. Maybe you get a lot of benefit out of the salt and the butter that you put on it. But you don't really digest it. And it's a really good marker to know how long food is in your system. In Great Britain, food stays in the system an average of 36 to 48 hours. Colon cancer is number two. Down in the Amazon, where they eat and defecate in eight hours, they don't know what cancer is. And yeah. eight eight hours. Hours. Yeah. Big difference on how you run your microbiome. Your next question. Yeah, my question is, so iodine, selenium, boron, magnesium, are you willing to quickly run through bacteria, virus, fungi? Oh, that's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. Boron is used by all plants in response to fungal infection to make resveratrol. Hmm. Or it's nicknamed reversitol. Because resveratrol is made to protect from fungus. So when you take resveratrol, um, the anti-aging effects are so overwhelming that the drug companies want their hands on it so bad you might not be able to buy it next year. Because they're trying to say, oh, this is really too good for you to have. You have to pay a lot more money for it. Glaxo Welcome paid David, I can't think of his last name. He's interviewed Wait. by Barbara Walters, $650 million for his patent on resveratrol. And the next year it was on the open market. So boron and resveratrol work together hand in hand at reducing fungus. So what does the Mayo Clinic say about fungus? 98% of sinus infections are fungal in nature. Why would you take an antibiotic for a fungus? So if you've got this fungus growing in your sinuses, you're either swallowing it or inhaling it or suffering from it. So you take something to kill it. So you get what's called a neti pot. And you put a little bit of ground up salt in there and you put one drop of tea tree oil per side and you get a direct application of salty neti pot tea tree oil and you do an, you know, an extrication, you get that fungus out of your nose so you're not breathing it. So that's the, that's the, that's the fungal side of things. On the viral side of things, Selenium. From what I can see, boron, I mean uh, selenium, is the best antiviral thing there is. So you've heard of Mrs. Smith who got the flu for two weeks and she got a little bit better than she relapsed. Well, her body finally figured out the genetic code to the virus that was making her sick and at the speed of mutation that virus says, oh we know what this game is, and it mutates into another one and she gets re-sick again. But if you have the selenium present, once you figure out the genetic code, you stay ahead of the virus's mutation. Everybody has a touch of mono in them. Everybody has a touch of the Epstein bar. But yet 65% of all cancers are virus related. The number of people that march into my office going, I've got cancer, I go, what virus do you have? They go, what are you talking about? I'm sure it's in this stack of paperwork. They don't look for the viruses. My mother's sister's granddaughter let her immune system down because she got pregnant. Because if you have a high immune system, you don't get pregnant. So your immune system goes down to nothing. She had mono when she was 14. A year after she has a baby, she's in the hospital having acute lymphocytic leukemia. I go, oh, I haven't looked that one up yet. And when I got through writing her paper, I found out that there was 325 articles on the Epstein-Barr virus. So I oh, that's a no-brainer. And Arlene, did your daughter have, or did your granddaughter have mono? Yeah, she had when she was 14, she's got it again. So the viruses are very tricky. They live at their residence, but they give you a false address. So if the virus is living inside the cell, the false address is outside the cell. Here, this is where I live. So they make 9 million, 100 billion white blood cells seeking that virus out, but it's looking in the wrong spot. And when you get sick, they go, oh my God, you got leukemia. 
We have the doctor's white blood cell drama saved her life. She's been in the hospital for three weeks after chemotherapy. They haven't looked for the virus. Routine. So selenium keeps these viruses under control. So onboard human bodies, P53. That's the name of a gene. The guardian of the genetic code is what it's done. Now it's estimated that two out of three people walking the face of the earth are selenium deficiency. Oh, that's just about the same rates as cancer. P53 does not work without selenium. Now the iodine factor. What's the biggest loss of iodine in the human body? The skin. Why is it there? Control all the stuff that it lives on. But we wash the iodine off every day. Do we put as much iodine into the body that we wash off? That's why we need so darn much iodine. Because we keep losing. So people go, well, I put iodine in my arm and it lasted an hour. Well, that's good. At least it didn't last more than 10 minutes. Some people have the iodine. Is that a good test? I don't think so. I think you should pee in a cup and send, you should take a bunch of Lugel solution, pee in a cup and send it off and find out your bromide, fluoride, and your iodine levels. Send it to Colorado, the Hanukkah lab. Know your base saturation. Farmers know what base saturation is for the soil. You need to know your base saturation for iodine. It's the heaviest, most important mineral that runs the entire hormone system. But iodine don't work alone. It's got to have selenium. So you got iodine for bacteria, you got selenium for virus, you got boron for fungus, and you got magnesium for bacteria. 1984, women were dying right and left from what's called toxic shock syndrome. You want to learn a lot about it? Go back to the Detroit News or the Detroit Free Press in April of 1984. It all came down to magnesium deficiency. <laughs> Women that have severe magnesium deficiency since have heavy body menstruation. So they need really absorbing napkins, and that caused the body to lose even more magnesium. And the common bacteria found everywhere called Staphylococcus aureus now lives in the bloodstream and kills them. So, low magnesium levels is, was the cause of Staphylococcus septus. And I didn't get that out of the book. I got that out of the Detroit Free Press. So I'm looking at that, oh boy, this is my early stages. You know, I'm just like, wow, only three years into practice and I can do everything. It's like when my son knew it all, I said, well, I'd make a good living. Share some with me. <laughs> so, that's the answer to your question. Mm -hmm. Well, what was the name of the test for iodine that you recommended? You said the, Hanukkah, the, the, the lab from Hanukkah. Okay. I'll, I'll, um, Norton. Norton always wants to sell me something even after I bought it. <laughs> so when I pull that up, I can chew gum and talk at the same time. Next question, yes. Um, it, well, most of us probably have had Lyme, and at least half of us have thyroid issues, so if those can work into the time. I, I couldn't hear a thing you said. I'm oh, sorry. Um, a, a lot of us might have experienced Lyme disease. Anything you recommend on that? And half the room statistically has thyroid issues. If well, I don't think I ever want to get Lyme's disease. <laughs> no, you don't want to get it. I don't ever want to get it. Um, I'm so petrified of Lyme's disease that living in northern Michigan, I don't go outside anymore in the summer. And if I get a tick on me, I'm a lunatic. I almost crashed a car. Because my, my lady friend has a cottage and I had four ticks on me. She's like, you've got a tick on your neck. Where? <laughs> At 70 miles an hour, pulling a big trailer. She's like, it's not there. Straighten the thing out. We're all over the road. And we're pulling on. I'm taking my shirt off. I'm down to the, I'm down to the side of a busy highway in my underwear. And she's looking for me. To where all the sun places don't go. This is the laboratory to find out your base saturation of iodine. The Lyme virus is a very unique virus, I mean bacteria, in the fact that every bacteria in your body lives off the iron. Lyme lives off of manganese. Wait, bacteria lives off the iron? All bacteria somehow derive their energy because of iron. Lyme lives off of manganese. So if... if Man, man, M-A-N-G, manganese. Oh, manganese, okay. So, where's manganese at? Well, it's, it's concentrated in your joints. It's used by your liver. It's used by the testicles. So, if, if I got a tick bite and I got that rash, 
I'm going to go get myself as poisoned as I could get from antibiotics because I do not want that going any further than the initial stage because it's going to migrate into my joints where white blood cells can't get. And when it does start to get, when my immune system says, hey, we got a handle on this, the Lyme's bacteria plays possum. It just folds over and has no protein antigens that the immune system sees and it goes to sleep until its sensor says, well, we can wake up and be active again. It's time to reproduce. So when you get, nobody's ever gotten rid of Lyme that I'm aware of yet. And I have always had a lookout for Lyme's. The head MD is in the same think I'm, tank I'm in with David Brownstein, and there's nothing new. Now, the best research I've seen so far is coming out of Boston University, and they're finding an extract of a stevia plant that may knock this out, may knock it down, and there is an herb that uh, Rubus delphos is growing down at Lancaster Egg, and I, I don't know the name of it, so I haven't memorized it yet. I looked at it, but I can't draw it up right now. That shows promising relief to keep the critters asleep for longer periods of time. Because it's devastating. It just it just wreaks havoc. There's, so, a, there's a great article in the European Journal uh, about stevia. Yeah. If you look at Lyme disease and stevia, it's got great microscopic views of what it does to the to the uh, biofilms. The biofilms. Destroying yeah. the biofilm and uh, and destroying the lime too. Yeah, but yeah. but they, they dry powder didn't work at all. I haven't so, seen what works yet. I mean, you know, when that magic pill comes out, well, somebody's going to sit in the beach for the rest of the plane. There, there were three three different companies that they bought from England, and it was all uh, tinctures. And they found that it's working. Yeah, fabulous. Well, if, if, you know, there's 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 controversy whether people have lines or not. So you go to the doctors and they do these IV bands, and you know, they have all these different proteins. And and if you got, I think IV number twenty three, or maybe it's number six, well, you've got it. But my one buddy that's got it, he says, Richard. He says, live cell analysis. He says, go have your blood taken out and set it on the shelf for three days. And then look at it on live cell analysis. Because if it's in the blood, they all came away and they're all active, and then you can see them all. But you can't see when you do the live cell analysis when it's fresh. He says, you've got to let the blood sit three days and then put it on there, and then you'll see all them spirochetes. Yes? Is the fact that the spirochetes are eating all the manganese what causes Joint pain. Yep. So we need the manganese. We well, yeah. I mean, people when it first happened, they didn't even know what it was, and all the people that muscle test goes, "Oh my God, you need manganese." I mean, you know, holy macro, your joints are terrible. You got you got to have more manganese because the spider spider cheats was using it all, and they load people up with manganese, and all they were doing is feeding the fire. Yeah. So what do you do? Well, oh. That's the paradox. I have been on the lookout for stuff for as long as I've known about limes. I won't go outside. I own a lake in northern Canada. When it's limes time, I just go to my lake as often as I can because I can, I'm not afraid to go outside because the, the bugs aren't up there yet. Yeah. And a couple of winters ago, we, it got down to 35 below zero. We had less we had less ticks, but this last year, it never got cold enough. Yeah. I mean, you just go outside and they see it. I was in a garage near dropping out of the rafters on me. Yep. Yeah. And it's the hairy tick limes from deer that you got to worry about. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what, I get Lyme disease and I had tested a couple different years, I had different times, and what's weird is, I always thought it was the weather for arthritis, because when it hits, every, it felt like I could throw it out of a vehicle doing 50 miles an hour, I mean, I'm sore every joint and everything, yep. but I found out it was with the weather, I think, that's my immune system. If I get a lot of sleep and I eat good and do real good, I, my immune system's up, I'll tell you, it fights a lot better. And that's when these things curl back up and go into a hibernation state. That's why people never, ever really get rid of limes. They just get it to yeah, go to sleep. Right, right. Got to hypnotize it for a while. Yes, in the back. Can you go back to the thyroid question? Yes. Go back to the thyroid. Well, what was the thyroid question? She had the thyroid question. What was the question? Just talk about it since. All right. We'll just finish limes. Good luck. <laughs> because I don't know how to make it go away. And, and every time there's a new book that's got the 10 best remedies for limes, they each got their protocols. And none of it makes it go away. It's just how they help people control it. Right. Yes, ma'am. Are, are you familiar with the scalar technology? The what? Scalar? Scalar. Scalar. S-C-A-L-N-A-R. The question is, do I know about using electromagnetic energy to try to figure out the frequency of these things and zap myself? I know enough about the no, no, white no, machine. No, it's not zapping. Sorry. It's, uh, you give your photograph, and it's supposed to treat 300,000 pathogens. 
and give you up to 300 nutrients and clear your chakras. It's done, you give, your, you give a photograph to them. They're in California. I've worked with it. Polaroid on or digital? Uh, digital is fine. So, uh, and um, it's really worth taking a look at because I've done it for months at a time and I would form a Scalar, S-C-A-L-A-R. I'm just trying to think of his name. I'll think of his name. It's Tom, um, I'll think of it, um, Palladino. Tom Palladino or uh, Scalar. And so these it treats all the co-infections of Lyme mm -hmm. and all um, viruses and bacteria and fungi. And then it's adding these nutrients with your picture. It's um, energy. Yeah, it's an energy technology, and I, I've worked with it often. Do last you have one too? No, I did, or I have had, but okay. I would say no, I don't. Oh, okay. I had it for a short period of time, and actually, a spiritual teacher that works with me uh, yep. seems to have done that, and I did two injections of colloidal silver, of nanoparticle silver. Yeah. And that seems to have gotten it, unfortunately, right away before I could identify with it. Yeah. So, um, but this technology, I really recommend taking a look because I've worked with it quite a bit and had some amazing results with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you can take it for three months minimum. They have, if you form a group, it's less expensive. Okay. So, maybe $60 a month if you think of supplements, two supplements that you would take. That would equal sixty dollars a month. Anyway, I really suggest well, it. Well, uh, Lyme's is Lyme's is to me up in the air because the uh -huh. best thing I've seen in research, you know, mm -hmm. pure research, is that, and there's always the alternative stuff that works. Yeah, if you have something viral and then you do that uh, therapy or do it for a few months, it will clear it. Then you know it works. If you don't have a specific thing, you may go, oh, I'm not sure, you know, if it's working or not. But if you have herpes or some other virus or something specific, maybe Lyme Co-infections. Co-infections, co they have all the co-infections. It's 300,000 uh, different pathogens. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a, a question and answer on Thursday evenings you could do online. Whatever. Well, there's 10,000 unique species of bacteria in your gut, so there's probably a lot more pathogens out there. Your belly's full of viruses, but there's a lot of good viruses that we need, and they all need to be tamed and harnessed and, and utilized, and I think selenium is good. Now, I have to go back because the question was thyroid. What specifically do you want me to answer about the thyroid? Uh, mineral deficiencies, mineral supplements, um, okay. biological. Well, the thyroid absolutely, diet. positively has to have iodine, and it's estimated that at least 80 to 85 percent of the United States does not get enough iodine, and we have rampant thyroid problems going on in people, and they don't know it. And there's a, yes ma'am. I've taken Atomodyne. I was trying to think of that, the name of it. So Atomodyne comes out of the Edgar Casey Institute. And I don't know exactly what the difference is between that and iodine. I'm wondering if you're familiar. I don't know anything about Somodyne. Atomodyne. I, I'm not familiar with it at all. Okay, all right. So. In, in my practice, I use biotics research and I use standard process as the stuff that I've been prescribing for you know, 35 years, more. Uh, but there's a lot of good stuff out there. That's because I don't know about it. Doesn't mean it's not good. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. I've stayed away from multi-level products, and there's a lot of good multi-level products out there. Because when you put multi-level products in front of patients, you look greedy, and I just don't do that. I mean, I've seen that a lot. Your question. Thorbin Kelp. Is that what you have? What? Thorbin Kelp. Is that? Yeah, I use Thorbin Kelp in my stuff. Yeah. And they have the rule high iodine. Yeah. Well, I mean. To take it, to get enough kelp in a three milligram, the pill would be pretty big and you wouldn't be able to swallow it. So I do have potassium iodine and sea kelp because I need that broad spectrum of trace minerals found in kelp. You just, you'd be eating, half, you'd be eating handfuls of kelp to get three milligrams. So. I understand there's one that loves kelp iodine and there's one that's really high. I haven't talked to uh, Eli. I'll talk to Eli next week at Acres. And I'll be asking that question because I'm supposed to go to, I was supposed to go last summer, but it didn't work out. I think next summer I'm going to go to Iceland to where they process it. Uh -huh. And go in the middle of the summer so I can have air conditioning in Iceland. Uh -huh. So going back to the thyroid, iodine deficiency, 
the longer your iodine deficiency, the, the worse it gets. And if you think, oh, if I need iodine, and you really have an iodine problem and eat a lot of iodine, and your immune system gets really pissed off, you get an autoimmune disease, and it's really hard to get rid of. So you just don't suddenly blast all kinds of iodine in your system. You work up slowly. Uh, you find out your base saturation and see how well you're absorbing it. And you've got to flush the fluorides out of your body, which is with selenium and, and boron. And you've got to get the bromines out of the body, which is chloride, as in sodium chloride. And sometimes you have to use lithium to get the uh, sodium potassium balances in your thyroid working better. But iodine is the key. And you've got to have selenium to make the iodine work. You know, you have high thyroid, you have low thyroid, you have autoimmune thyroid. Where does it all start? It starts from trace mineral deficiencies. I, I've done a lot of research with the thyroid, and I don't find where viruses get in and trigger these. It's usually something else. And I really don't have all the answers. But you have all these hormones in your body that are 100% dependent on the thyroid hormone. And if iodine can be displaced and replaced with fluoride, it behooves you to stay away from fluoride. Mm -hmm. Because people get fluoride in their system, and I don't think the body knows the difference, and it makes products out of fluoride instead of iodine, that's the wrong size, it's the wrong shape, and you blood test it, it goes, no, you're normal, your eyes can be bugging out, you can have bags underneath your throat, you can put 50 pounds on, because they test the thyroid-stimulating hormone, which isn't even a thyroid product, it's the signal from the brain to the thyroid to go to work. That's what they test, and then you go, no, you're okay. It takes about $1,000 worth of testing to check all the profiles to try to work with the thyroid. You've got to have a lipid panel, you've got to have a vitamin D panel, you've got to have, you gotta have the, a, the antibodies checked, you've got to check your T3, your T4, your T3 free, your T4 free. There's a lot of stuff you've got to check to try to figure out where it's at. The state of Michigan, I've only recently been able to get blood work, and since I'm not going to be doing that clinical aspect, I don't order the blood work. I turn it over to David Bronstein and his associates when I've got really bad cases. It's just like this young lady. It's easy to identify. Stand up and show up. She came in here last night, we were talking. I started looking at her, I'm like, oh my God, this one eye's really bad. She's in Graves' disease. And, and we, we talked quite a bit, and I said to her last night, I said, you know, you can't do this alone because you're trying to sell doctor. You need someone that knows this stuff really good. I said, you're going to get a heart problem. What did you say? I'm doctoring for my heart right now. What is the number one cause of heart disease? Thyroid problems. And so when you start having heart disease, you go to cardiologists. Well, they're going to treat the heart. Right? That's why you go to heart doctors. If you don't want heart disease, you keep your thyroid working really good. That is the bottom line. Cardiovascular disease is secondary to chronic thyroid problems, insufficiencies, abnormal balances. So you, you, you can't say enough about getting it fixed. And I don't claim to be the wherewithal. I know people that do that. So I wrote my buddy David Brownstein last night. I said, what do you know in Manhattan? And he emailed me back and gave me the name of a doctor that she's going to see because she's from New York. She's going to call this doctor up and deal with a holistic doctor that just doesn't say, Here's some radiation for your thyroid. We're going to kill it, and I'll be able to regulate it for as long as I live. Then you have somebody else that will give it to you. Then you go on to synthetic thyroid medicine, and you go to the doctor, and you're depressed, and they give you some fluoride antidepressants, and in 30 days, you've got to double the thyroid medicine. Not a good deal. So the next subject, what would we guess? Did you expand on silver? You, you didn't I don't do too, silver. You didn't seem yep. too happy with silver colloids. I, I, I just don't use silver. And also, um, I've got a couple of silver fillings that, you know... They're not silver. Out. They're not silver. Out, whatever they're 65% mercury. Mercury. And there's a lot of nickel in there. Whatever you call it. Um, is there a real urgency to get those out? Or is That's a very good question. Taking yeah. the right the, the right if, you're, if you're taking a lot of selenium and you can bind it up and keep it moving through your system, so that's yeah. one option. Or you can have them removed. And assuming the dentist doesn't let you swallow anything or you What's breathe it in. I, I can what, wait until it's what are you going to put in? What are you going to pay someone oh, to put in? <laughs> a composite. Yeah. I've got some composites. Ooh. And I've seen the glasses they put on. And they put this thing in my mouth. And they go like this. So the composite can get super hard in 35 seconds. Ooh. There's only one mineral that allows that type of energy activity. 
It's the same mineral that puts a man on the moon. It's the same mineral that makes an F-16 go past the speed of sound, and that's fluoride. So now your teeth are designed to do what? Grind. You want to grind fluoride into you every meal and every bite? I'm taking my chances with the amalgam. Because I know if I take enough selenium, I can keep moving this through. So what do I take to counteract the composites? Selenium. Selenium. Oh, the composites? Yeah. Iron. Huh? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Are you talking about the importance of uh, silica? Yes. Uh, is diamond earth a good source of bioavailable silica? It's a good question. I, I don't know the answer. I know that uh, they're made liquid silica, and you've got horsetail that's got silica. Um, Chris, uh, Professor Chris Exler says that salic acid, naturally found in spring waters, is the best way to get aluminum out of your body. Um, people promote silica to get aluminum out of their body, and he says it doesn't work that way. Um, I think if people want to get silica the cheapest way possible, go buy gelatin. Because ground up fingernails, this is full of silica. <laughs> That's not necessarily the answer you wanted to hear. <laughs> but they make, or, we, I've got a health food store full of silica. We got three different kinds. We got liquid silica. Yeah, we you have you just not, you not, you don't know about diet of earth. I do, I do know about it. I got a jar of it, I sell it. Uh -huh. It's great for ants and all kinds of things. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's not about a good biological source of there's, there's some I don't know enough sources. to say. I, I'm sorry. Sorry, there are better sources. I, I don't know that's enough about the answer field, to the question. So I'd be happy to talk to you about that. Yeah, is it silica? Yeah, it's a diatom. It's just you know, all silica. Um, I would rather put it on the plants and eat the plants. You know, potatoes, potatoes, tomatoes, potatoes, green peppers, and eggplants are really high on the silks. The silks. So, you know, trying to get everything from your food. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, I don't know if you're talking about strep throat. I've gotten it like every year since uh, third grade. Okay, so the, the answer is uh, uh, an Im immune system that's not able to, to, to take care of strep. You do a stool test and you'll find out what is growing in the strep field. And most of the time what you can use when we see this in the stools you probably have strep A, strep B, or a non-hemolytic strep. They, it's rampant in your gut. There are many people that live with raging strep infections in their system. And then when it goes to the throat, it becomes symptomatic. But this is growing in your intestines. And a stool sample from Dr. Data will show that. But they don't tell you what kills the strep. What we use is oregano oil. Oregano oil really knocks down those... Um, and normally, if you have the fourth cervical in your neck work on, uh, there's something to do with the frequency and the nerves that get your lymphatics to open up and make your tonsils work a little bit better, create more white blood cells to attack. Because your tonsils are the first line of defense. And people, oh, I had mine taken out. They're infected. Maybe they're secreting something to try to help you. I had mine taken out when I was sick, unfortunately. Your tonsils? It didn't do that. So get a stool test, but when we see the, when you get the stool test back, it gives you all the known grouping of bacteria that are supposed to be there. Then it gives you stuff that's really overgrown that you're only supposed to have a little bit of. And you always see the, the hemolytic strep, strep A, strep B in that column. When I see that, I just use oregano oil every 12 hours for two months, and then we test the stools to see if you got rid of it. And other people, oh, I did it for a week and I felt better, and I'm done. It's just the way people are. Next question. Did you just talk about nail health? Right. Nail health? Yeah. Silica. As a source. Also, uh, oh, if you see them all, you know, all goofed up and stuff, the nails, well, that's an iron problem. Dry, like, uh, brittle. brittle. Well, you, yeah, you need, you need help your nails. So right. I would start off with silica. And, and what really makes nails work come back good is corella, that, that mm -hmm. algae from the ocean, corella. Silica, and if you have fungus in your nails, you have a boron problem. And if you have white spots in your fingernails, you have a zinc deficiency. Yes? Um, I'd like to understand the mechanism a little better. <laughs> because of the deficiencies, there are minerals in there we don't want, and we want to swap them out with ones that we do want, there's replacement going on. Do you need to detox to get the stuff out and then substitute, or can you just start eating a healthy? You know, different food choices, and your body will hot swap stuff out for 
cadmium, lead, mercury, barium, beryllium, thorium, silver, tin, all need selenium. There's no selenium in the soil east of the Mississippi and west of the Mississippi. It's the wrong kind of selenium that poisons people. That's why there's no farm that functions without adding some form of selenium to the feed. If you're organic, you're probably paying $400 for a 50-pound bag. If you're not, you're paying $50 for a 50-pound bag. But you can't rear animals without selenium. So that selenium is ending up in the fields, and it's now coming up and coming up. But if you don't put selenium into this mixture, you're not going to pull any of this stuff out. You pull it out, you don't want to just move it. You've got to have a lot of fatty omega-3s to get it out of the body. Your immune system in your gut requires fatty omega-3s as one of the most important things to keep the gut flora going. You've got to have all these bacteria, but you also have to have a lot of oils. You can grab that stuff, but what's it going to attach to? How's it going to get out? And fatty omega-3s, I use flaxseed oil on just about everybody with selenium. That shows these heavy metals are trying to get out. So you could, if you have tons of if you're rolling a dough, you can go to a place and pay a lot of money and have them put EDTA and do the bags of chelation. It's pulling everything out, and then you put back in what you want. Um, we have rectal suppositories that you do every other night for two months, and then we check your hair in three months. That, that's the poor man's way of doing it. It's still expensive, but it's not like paying $300 a bag in an office call to do it 20 times. And then the third option is uh, Biotics Research come out with a really good product that pulls it out slower, but it's just pills you take. Now, change your diet. Yeah, start so eating if I eat hands full of Brazil nuts. And yeah, so if I eat the Brazil nuts, will my body be smart enough to swap out, put the selenium where it yeah. should have been, yeah. and take the other stuff out? Or it'll say, oh, that keyhole is full. Uh, well, it, it will do that, but what, you'll, what I see happens to some people, they get upset because you're really high in cadmium, and we do, we do uh, uh, homeopathy cadmium, we do selenium, we do the fatty omega-3s, and in three months, cadmium, yes, went down, but seven other minerals jumped right up. Because as you turn on the detoxification process, and this stuff starts pouring out of the, lymph out of the lymphatics from your brain, you might have ten other minerals come up. And what do they say then? Now, what did you do to me? And I said, I didn't do anything. I'm trying to undo what you did. You were worse than I thought you were. We just do that for three more months. Then you see the numbers come down. Okay. It, does, it takes a while to get pretty poisoned to the point that you've got to do something. And you just don't detox overnight. I had a 15-year-old. I had a 15-year-old that had really high arsenic levels, and I said, "Do you eat rice?" And he goes, "That's what he lives on." Well, there's a lot of rice that has a lot of arsenic. So we put him on the we put him on the rectal detox. We put him on the the homeopathy arsenic and fatty omega threes. Within a week, his big toenails about fell off, and he detoxed so fast. If you look at that acupuncture chart with the liver ends, it overwhelmed his liver to the point his toenails were ready to fall off. And I ended up setting him the Amish burn and wound salve and burdock root and all kinds of stuff to just keep wicking this stuff out until he started getting better. But we didn't realize how bad the arsenic poisoning was. It was in the hair, but there was a lot more in his body than the hair indicated. So we, we you know, had to keep people from freaking out when their 15-year-olds can't walk too well because the toenails were falling out. It's like, well, you, well you, first of all, you didn't tell me that he ate grace every meal. We only found it in your drinking water. Because we did, we sampled it. She paid eleven thousand dollars to get the water supply straightened out, but it was coming from the water and it was coming from the rice. And, and rice, for whatever reason, is a real magnet to uh, arsenic. Uh -huh. what, what yes, could you talk about prostate? Yeah. Uh, prostate health. Yeah. Very good. Um, prostate and PSA and boron go hand in hand. The the the, the what boron does in the body. It goes after certain things, and the prostate antigen specific molecule is something that's an indicator that your prostate needs more and more. And of course, you can buy what pumpkin seeds, and, and there's some bush out of Florida, I can't think of the name of it. There's a lot of things that you use, and zinc. I mean, the prostate gland is the organ that stores your zinc. So, people that are low on zinc will also. Uh, and Standard Process makes a really good product called Prostex, P-R-O-T-E-X. Um, if I sense my stream being restricted, I take Prostex for about four days, and that only happens about every six months. There's something in there that I, I get out of, and it shrinks it up, and I'm good to go. But I've been taking boron, and I haven't had any prostate issues whatsoever, but 
more iron in your prostate is. And then the, one of the problems with the prostate is the getting the selenium into the prostate. So you get particular cancer cell lines. You've got to get that selenium into the prostate, and the selenomethionine doesn't do it. You've got to go to diamond B, and you've got to get their AF2000 or their AF3000, which is an organic yeast base. I learned that from Mark Whitaker. Mark Whitaker is one of the more brainy guys. Um, he made a, Matt Damon made a movie of Mark Whitaker and being with a big corporation and being tagged for eight years and going to prison and all that kind of stuff. He got out of prison. I gave him a call, and he's, he was making a big selenium plant down in there. And I said, well, what's the big deal with the yeast? He says, well, that's the only one that you'll get across the prostate membrane. It's the weed. It is the yeast-based selenium. So what's the name of the product uh, from Diamond V, that's in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. It's called Selenosource AF 2000 or 3000. That's parts per million in the bag, and it's certified organic. So I buy a bag of it, and it sits in a treatment room. And if any man comes in and has prostate cancer, I give him a quart of it, and I say, here, there's enough selenium for the rest of your life. And it keeps this, most men are supposed to die with prostate cancer, not from it. And this is one way to make sure that they die with it, not from it. Don Cordes was the first organic farmer in our county in 1981. Eight years ago he came in and I said, Don, here's enough selenium for the rest of your life. And in six months he came back and says, I need more. I looked at him and I said, you're not any more bald than you were? Your fingernails still intact? Oh no. He says, my numbers are good and I feel good. And he took on God knew months of selenium, more than I've ever seen anybody take, and it didn't have any ill effects. Everybody lived eight more years. He didn't die from selenium poisoning. He died because he was 88 and got really old. So this four or five hundred dollars a bag. I've gone to Acres conventions. I went up to the real salt people. They got them bottles about that big. I said, bring it to me. I take the top off. I put a tablespoon of selenium there, shake it up so that you put a little bit of selenium with your salt every time you use it. It's a good way of taste. Terrible. Even at my standards, it tastes terrible. I give it to a guy with prostate cancer, and three days later, he goes, give it to somebody else. I'm going to die. <laughs> and a year later, he fell off the bridge in his backyard. He was painting it and said, no. Oh. So I'm just going to get it, so I'm going to die and have that. Uh, I have bad news about the salon source. It's no longer available. Um, it's not available as a standalone product in the United States. Selenosaurus. Selenosaurus 3000. They don't make the 3000 no more? It's not. It's, they're saying it's not available as a standalone product in the United States. Are they making the 2000? Um, There's another no. organic company that you can actually buy the human from. It's called Altec. Altec? Yeah. A L T. I believe so. Just type, uh, type in A-L-T-E-C slash selenium. It's a, it's a company on the East Coast that, that a lot of organic people are using all the time. And they've been around a long time, too. They, it, it, the big thing about viruses is selenium. Now, i got one guy that I've known for 30, 30 years, he full-blown HIV. I says, you know, what the HIV virus does is run all the selenium out of your body. Start taking selenium. He took a selenium with his other cocktail of pills. I mean, he really pissed me off after 20 years and he decided to buy a slant from somebody else that was cheaper. <laughs> but he takes the slant every day. You don't know this guy's HIV. And, and he was a real radical activist. I said, where's all your radical friends? And he said, buried. I mean, you know, there was a whole bunch of these people that died. And selenium keeps this virus. If, if you have a virus that runs the selenium out of your body and you lose control of the oxidation process, Everything that can grow on you can and will. These people die from basic selenium deficiencies. They lose control of the oxidation process. You got the circle something cancers that get into you. You have all these opportunistic things that break your body down. And they keep trying to do the antiviral drugs and all these cocktails and stuff, but selenium is the best thing that you can do, not just for the HIV, but for any virus you got out there to keep them asleep or keep your immune system one step ahead of the mutations. Okay, moving on from HIV. Yes, ma'am. Can you address arthritis as we... Arthritis? Osteoarthritis? 
is wear and tear, and the great relief is born. And you probably wouldn't have arthritis if you had a well born in body. Every cell in your body has to have the ability to respirate and create energy. And when you have cells that do not have a direct blood supply, the mitochondria needs phosphorus to function. Phosphorus is a negative three molecule. If you can see boron into the cells, that's a positive three, and it will draw in the phosphorus so the cells can function. When the cells can't function, the calcium builds up, and it builds up, and it calcifies your chunks. So you start taking lots of boron. Now, you want to just take straight boron? You'll get some relief. But probably turmeric or concentration of turmeric called curcumin. These are boron delivery systems that work really well. They're very expensive, but they work very well. If you have joints that have arthritis that are close to the skin, you can get turmeric essential oils. And they work fantastic. They work great on necks, they work great on toes, they work great on hands, but there's too much muscles around the low back to get it to penetrate deep enough. These are, these are boron delivery systems. In the state of Israel, they have the highest concentration of boron in the civilized world and the incidence of arthritis is less than 1%. In Jamaica, where they have some of the lowest, they have 80% of the population has arthritis. So there's a, there's a great disparity. Now, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease, meaning something is in your brain that's not telling your gut how to work right, or you've got something growing in your gut that you shouldn't have, or you're, you don't have something growing you should and then your immune system starts attacking other cells. There's a big difference between rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. Yes, ma'am. So I'm confused about taking individual, um, taking these individually, because aren't each one that is like, if you take too much boron, I don't know what its opposite is, but don't you have to be careful about, if you take too much of that, it's the other, it's going to go. Control reaction with other minerals. Yeah, isn't, it, isn't, I forget, isn't there like, I don't know what boron is, it Ida? Isn't there one opposite for each of these? Minerals? Well, yeah, boron is a plus three, and, and the minus three would be either be nitrogen or it's phosphorus. So if you're a farmer, you're trying to get production of nitrogen to create energy for your plants. If you're a human being, you're trying to make the nitrogen work to create probiotics to get your vitamins so you can absorb minerals. If you're talking about boron in the brain, it sits there and does nothing, except make sure that nothing happens in the spinal cord. And also, it is there to repel aluminum. Calcium and magnesium work by pushing and pulling, and that's what makes muscle contractions. Mm -hmm. Sodium and potassium makes all your nerves fire. Boron sits in your brain in the highest concentrations to just simply repel aluminum. It's more magnetic in nature than it is an actual pump like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium. So I don't think that taking a multiple vitamin with 80 or 90 things in it really does people a world of good yeah. because I like to see my a few minerals going in. Yeah. And so I picked out the minerals that I think that make your genetic code work to the laws of physics. Gravity, magnetism, weak and strong <laughs> electrical forces because your DNA code is subject to gravity. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think makes the whole code run. And if you look at the geological maps of the United States, there isn't anybody that's got everything. There's nowhere in the United States where you have adequate iodine, adequate selenium, adequate magnesium, adequate boron. Northern Michigan doesn't have magnesium, boron, sunlight, or selenium, or iodine. The county I live in has the highest cancer rates per capita. Period. So that's why, I mean, I put that one pill together based on my knowledge of tumor suppressing genes, physics, and the genetic code. That's, I think, my best foot forward to try to make your chances of getting cancer 1 in 10 instead of 1 in 2. Do people get cancer? Yes, they do. People taking my mineral complex and got cancer? Yeah. I don't know if they'd have got it a lot earlier. You don't know if they're full of viruses and you just don't, they're not, whatever they're doing. Maybe you get involved in something that you shouldn't have gotten involved with and it creates these events like mesothelioma. It's an asbestos problem. It's not a virus, it's just you got something in your system that causes these cells to mutate in such a way that when you got it, it's all lights out pretty badly really quick. And it's high noon. That's the grand you know, unified. Yeah, grand unified mineral complex. It's got my name on it. Dr. Olry's pill. 
That's great. Gina, yes, Gina. Um, gluten intolerance, is there a mineral deficiency? Okay, or, the question is gluten intolerance. In 1996, celiac disease, gluten intolerance, was 1 in 10,000, and you could do a blood test. Now it's 1 in 110, and none of them pass the blood test. It's not true celiac. What's going on? Well, what would be gluten that gets sprayed on all the conventional fields? Glycine. Some type of glycine molecule. I'll leave it at that. Thank you for allowing me to be your presenter. Uh, DrRichOlry.com. It should be up in a week or so. Okay. All it takes is money. <laughs>